scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Before I start my review, I just want to say that Jane of the Air, all one word, that's at Jane of the Air, now has its own Twitter feed. If you're interested in my work on my new children's series, Jane of the Air, check that one out and add it to your list. Crashing on. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This time talking about the latest Torchwood. Oh, I'm so glad we've got those little one-disc gorgeousnesses. This is release number 20. Now I know there'll be a whole new series along very soon with the proper Torchwood cast. And eventually they'll probably do an Aliens Amongst Us new series again, or whatever you want to call it. But for me, my favourite are these individual releases. Not saying the others aren't great. Having Yvonne back's just glorious. And the future one with... Her that's just been announced and, well, let's not do spoilers, Wotan and the War Machines. Oh yeah, now that gets my vote. All that needs is the countermeasures team and then I might even do a little dance. But that's not important. What I'm here to talk about today is the last beacon. Not only does it have Bern Gorman playing Owen Harper, but it's also got Yanto. And the bloke who played Yanto wrote this. Now, I didn't even know that Gareth had put pen to paper for this one. What I did do was just listen to it. Didn't read any of the background, didn't even look at the cover, didn't even look at the picture. Well, I might have glanced at the picture with the two of them on the front. I was just glad they were both in it. Yes, it has tentatively a countryside feel to it. That's countryside the episode. And, of course, it's set in the countryside. But this is perhaps the single most Welsh Torchwood you'll ever hear. It's been written by someone who's walked these places, someone who's lived there, someone who's felt what the grass is like after it's the rain. It's just so well told. The sensation in the storytelling is real. It's about as Welsh as you can get. It's got valleys, it's got the mines, it's got... Well, it feels more Welsh than the Green Death. And I'll just leave that one with you. Well, of course it feels more Welsh than the Green Death. I'm more Welsh than the Green... No, leave it there. It's got actual Welsh people in it. Can we move on? Your storyline, as it is, is fairly basic. There's a signal. The two guys go off. And it's set firmly after Cyberwoman... So Yanto is trying to prove himself as, well, you know, a member of Torchwood. Getting back in the saddle, so to speak. And so they traipse off on the bus into the middle of nowhere. And if you've ever had the chance to stay in Wales, this feels so authentic. It reminded me of at least two holidays I've had. And at least one excursion into a mining museum. Actually, two. When I was listening to this, apart from, of course, the massive feeling of authenticity, it just felt like a great and accurate and fitting episode of Torchwood. Now, Torchwood itself is about ten years old, possibly more now. And into this exciting Torchwoody world, actually I think twelve, isn't it, at this point as I record? Now, Torchwood is science fiction, and it is science fiction of its time, set firmly in the years that it was broadcast. But now, 12 years on, you've got nostalgia. Any references to current events or the sorts of things that were on TV at the time fixed it firmly in place. Then there's a lull where you feel it's dated. But now, after this period of time, those references that appear in this narrative become more, well, pertinent, 
more placing it in its time and date. Perhaps there's a sort of seven-year cut-off where things stop becoming dated and dating of the programme and they become more referential and important. Perhaps there's a thesis in this. Perhaps I'm rambling pointlessly. I suspect it's the latter. So the two of them end up in Wales. And it's just great. There's a just enough of a MacGuffin of a storyline to drag them on and get them investigating in a proper Torchwoody fashion. There are dead ends. There are leaps of faith. There are incidents in a pub which feel so, again, authentically real as to, well, we've all been there. And if we haven't, we will at some point. As a starting point, or perhaps a jumping on point, this is a good place to begin with Torchwood. It's not as convoluted as some of the others. It is referential in, well, it's got minimal referential moments. So, if you have just seen TV Torchwood, this is a great place to begin. Do I recommend it? Of course I do. This is my favourite type of Torchwood. Is it well written? Yes. And that is what we need to say. So go away, young man. You did very well here. Bring us more of the same, only different and better. Because that's what people normally say and normally ask for. We don't know what we want, but we know we want you to give it to us. And that is a vote of confidence in anyone's writing. I didn't even know that it was written by anyone. I knew it was written by somebody new because it felt so differently real. That is just another vote of confidence. And I was well prepared to say whoever wrote this, we need them back before I found out it was actually a cast member. So you're not just an actor, you're a writer. And you're not just an actor who writes, you've actually written something worthy of the Torchwood label. And with that, I'll fade away and let you listen to the trailer for Torchwood, The Last Beacon. Be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Torchwood, The Last Beacon. Why am I not the one in charge? If whoever's behind the transmission has had dealings with us before, they might recognise us. That's why we're undercover. It's people who are looking for something. That way we won't draw attention to ourselves by, well, you know, looking for something. Wow. Why aren't you in charge all the time? God! He's on fire! Look alive! Can you just try to enjoy the change of scenery? Look at the mountains. Take in the surroundings. Oh, I have! So far I've seen a fantastic selection of pubs, most of them boarded up, an array of kids smoking on benches, nine pairs of pyjama bottoms, two terrified community support officers and seven kebab shops. Oh, just close your eyes! It's not real! Big birds! Look out! You're absolutely right, Yanso. This truly is God's own country. OK. I hate your finish. Big finish. We love stories. Uh, try not to get any blood on the desk. We've only just polished. <laughs> Sorry. Two thousand and eighteen brings with it three brilliant conventions, all held at the Derby Quad. ShadowCon two, the UFO convention, will be on June the thirtieth, two thousand and eighteen. Hooverville, the best little Doctor Who convention in the world is on Saturday the 1st of September, while Big Finish Day is on the 3rd of November 2018. All tickets are available from the Derby Quad website. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance.